Welcome everyone to episode 70 of Kiwi Talks. My guest today is a hip-hop artist and I have not done a hip-hop artist in quite a while. I'd like to welcome my man Zap. Yo, thank you so much for having me, man. That's all good, bro. I see you're quite the hip-hop fan, eh? Like, I've noticed that I've even, like, gave your Facebook a little stalk, bro. I've seen you, like, with some old-ass hip-hop dudes, eh? Like, some old pics. It's yeah, like dude. Well, that's DPs, bro. I was like, yo, this guy really loves hip hop. I like it. The, uh, well, he's um, well, uh, basically my background is in hip hop. I'm just adjusting these levels here. Uh, yeah, so I came from that. I grew up in West Auckland, and um, yeah, yeah. I did hip hop for a while, and then um, yeah, I got onto, I got onto this. Yeah, you and and, did. And you do I, like sound engineering? Like, were you recording artists and stuff? Yep, yep. Uh, hence the poster in the background. Yes, yes, I did. I studied. I studied all of that jazz, and um, yeah. And what here. was it like? How long did it take to get that course done? That degree, whatever? I think it was nine months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nine months. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, most people that do that sort of stuff, they don't even find work afterwards. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a that's the typical thing with a lot of this media uh, stuff, or any type of music or anything. You can do all these courses, and then there's not enough work available. Mm. So, I sometimes say to people, like, hmm. Maybe you don't need to study. Maybe you can just like watch YouTube or something. Yeah, it's fascinating because like the everyday regular person has no idea what goes behind like a mix and a master of a track, eh? No, nah, they, they, have they no just kind of hear that and take it for granted. Yeah, and they have no idea like all the work that's gone into that, eh? So how do, how did you get into it? Honestly, I just fell in love with it when I was young. You know, you know, Fast Crew, uh, crew yeah, Fast bro, crew? I remember Fast Crew. Yeah. So, um, long story short, eh, my mate had like one of those What Now CDs. Yeah, and then that fast crew song came on the one, and I got you know that one. Yep, and I just fell in love with it, just like the rhythm, the flow, like the cadence, how they were pronouncing their words, like what they were saying. I think the main thing that really attracted me was like the energy too. It was just such a nice change from like all this pop I was hearing on the radio, and I was like a real young kid, and I just fell in love with it. Eh? Like I started making up like rhymes in primary school and all that, and then this was before I knew like where hip hop came from, how like black culture like originated hip hop and it's crazy to think like not to get all racial, but like what black culture has done, like from their comedy, their entertainment, their sports, their music. It's crazy what they've done. And like now hip hop's like the biggest industry. It's like yeah. a billion it's like the biggest um genre of music now. Yeah. And it's insane. Like oh and I just love it. I just really fell in love with it, eh bro? Like the energy, the hype, especially the confidence too, like just how confident these hip-hop dudes are, eh? Like, I would go home from school, bro, and just watch Breakfast Club interviews and Hot 97 interviews, and I'd be like, how did this dude, like, where did he get all this hunger from? You know, how is he so confident? And obviously they, they overcome a lot of adversity at a young age, you know? Not not all of them, but, you know, a lot of these hip-hop dudes, you know, come from quite tough backgrounds and have poverty you, and all that. And have you been to America? I haven't. I'd love to, bro. I'd love to. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been to America. Um... I spent like a tiny bit of time in LA and mostly in Seattle, but I do want to go back at some point. But when you go there, you realize how cutthroat it is there. Yeah. I, like I've heard that you need to check in to certain cities, like even like artists that aren't in a gang, apparently if they want to perform in a certain city, they've got to check in with like the main, the main dude who runs that city, like the gang dude. Is that true? Do you know? Uh, it probably depends on what city. Call it checking in, like. Like, apparently, artists might even be shooting a video in another city, then, like, a gang dude will come up to them and be like, yo, why the fuck yeah. are you shooting in our city? Like, you didn't or check in. Or maybe, maybe in, like, Atlanta or New York or something. I don't think anyone yeah. cares in, like, North Dakota. Yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if they come for you over there, eh, bro? They'll be nuts. Like, they just pull up. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So was there a particular artist that inspired you? So from a very young age, it would have been, like, I first heard, like, Fast Crew, then remember Scribe? Oh, yeah, of course bro. you remember Scribe. He's the man. Oh, I hope he's all right, eh, bro? Nah, he, I think he's all good these yeah. days. I think, he's, I think his days of hip-hop are behind him, though. Yeah, it was quite quite fascinating because um, when I was young, when I was 15, I won this competition like for Tauranga for doing um, writing a rap about like anti-gambling and anti-drugs. And oh, it, sounded, like, it sounded mad corny. Like, it was terrible, but I still won it. And... Um, <laughs> That was when, like, Scribe had changed. This was in 2011. And he was all about, like, sobriety and, like, you know, anti-drugs, no gambling. And then, nice. Oh, <laughs> it seems like, I hope he's all right. Like, I'm a fan of him, but it seems like he's been in some shit lately, eh? And 
Has it might have gone back to his old ways, so yeah. Well, you like. don't know what's true in the media and what yeah, what isn't. Exactly, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe at some point I'll talk to him. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure he's a fan, bro. Yeah. So how do you how do you go about writing? So when you're writing a song, how do you construct it? So what it? I do, bro, I always prefer to have the beat first. Yep. And then I, I like to start off with the hardest and then do the easiest. So I always find the hardest is to do the hook. Like I'll have so many variations of like the hook and how I want to get it. So then I might have like three different hooks, find the best one depending on like the flow, the cadence, the variation. And I find like writing verses pretty easy now just because I've done so much. Like when I was really young, I used to really struggle with writing. I used to just only freestyle. And I'd really struggle with like the writing and how to get the verse like in time, like writing the bars and all that. But now it's like a breeze. It's like, I don't know, it's almost like muscle memory, eh? And it just comes a lot more naturally now. I also find that caffeine really helps my writing process. <laughs> yeah, I've like yeah. I've got a pro- I don't know if you'd call it a problem. Like there are worse things to be addicted to, but caffeine, eh, bro? I freaking I love it, man. I think a lot of people are yeah. addicted to caffeine. To be perfectly honest, yeah. Like, would you rather be addicted to crack or coffee? You know? It's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, one of your one of the jams I like most by you is uh, pieces. Oh well, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So um, tell me about that jam, bro, because I know it's uh, the beat is uh, Big Lean, yeah. Nipsey Hustle, yeah. But bro, if I'm being perfectly honest, like I think it's way better than the original track. Oh, like you and Jay Dot, like kill it, man. Oh, I really appreciate that, man. Um, yeah. The funny thing is, like, the reason why that is like a non-original slash non-least exclusive beats because this I wrote that like back when I was doing like mixtapes and all that. Oh yeah. But it was one of those songs where I always wanted to like do something more with it, like get a video, like a good video for. And um, shout out to that dude, J.A. I I was a big fan of him, him and Hula Gang. Um, YK and J.A. from the Hibiscus Coast, I believe. Yeah, bro. They they, um, they really inspired me. I really like the way they go about their craft. Like, especially the first thing that really got me with their music is how it was mixed. And I found out that Roman from the North Shore mixes him. And now he's been my engineer for like the last three years. Nice. Because I was, sorry to go off track, man, but I'll, I was always picky about mixes, eh? Like, I would hear a lot of local music and it sounded like it had been recorded on like a 07 webcam, eh? Like, it just, it just like, they might have had the talent, like they might have had the bars, but they weren't going the right way about getting their product finished, you know? It just didn't, didn't sound polished. So I, I just, I was just a mad fan of them and how they go about their work. And I sent that to J-Dot and he really liked it. Then he sent back the hook. And then, yeah, I really wanted to get a video done for it. And then, yeah, we shot a video in Auckland. And, yeah, no, I really – I was – brings back good memories, eh, bro? Rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle, too. He's he's yeah, an yeah, inspiring yeah. dude, like, all about work ethic and being independent and, like, owning your own masters and everything. You know, he's – Yeah, for sure. Very business-orientated man. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. I definitely agree. Because how long ago did you do that song? It's quite a while. I originally wrote that in 2017. Okay. And then released it in 2018. So yeah, it was, that was a while ago now. It's a bit of a throwback. Bit of a throwback, man. Yeah. But yeah, I hope um hope J Don and YK are doing good because they're incredibly talented, man. Yeah, yeah. Is there anyone that you haven't collaborated with that you want to collaborate with? Like Kiwi Wise? Oh, either or. I mean, Drake's my main dude, eh? Oh. <laughs> you no, know, I'm being straight up. Drake's my main man. I'd love to collab with Drake, my bro. But um, um New Zealand wise, definitely scribe. Yep. PNC, David Dallas. Um, David Dallas has been quiet for a bit, eh, bro? Has he dropped anything lately? I don't think so. I think because um, he does a lot of esports, so I think he's focused on Street Fighter. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, bro. True. Yeah, if you if you go like check his story on Instagram, now and then you'll see stuff popping <laughs> up with Street Fighter, Street yep. Fighter Five. Oh, true. I had no idea, man. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 a bit of a nerd, eh? In terms of like, yeah. And I mean that in a good way. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I knew that he ran the um, the Red Bull sixty four bars. Eh? He sounds like he's like the main guy behind that. You know, how, like multiple artists go up there do sixty four bars. Yeah, yeah. With Red Bull, looks that looks good. Yeah, yeah. And his his verse for that, he killed it, man. He killed it. He did. He he's really changed. Eh? like he used to be quite like an aggressive pit bull. Eh? back in the day. Um. Well, like his style is rap, yeah. Well, his style from like say the front line days. Um, to now is really different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Freaking crazy, man. He's yeah. a good dude, though. Um, who else is there? Oh, there's so many artists, eh? Like, 
I know I've already missed like a million of them because I, I meet a lot of real good artists. Say, eh? do, um, do you find that there are some assholes that you meet though? I'll be honest, I've only had good run-ins, eh? Oh, okay, you're but lucky I, then. You're I, lucky. I, I hear about bad run Oh, particularly like one guy, I don't want to... You don't, don't have to name drop him. Don't nah. give him any shine. Nah, but there's this one dude, eh? I don't, like, I, I've never met him. And I, I used to, like, I used to be quite um quite fascinated by how he was going about his business and everything. But I feel like if the same story keeps coming back time and time again from different people, especially people that you validate their opinion and you trust them highly then yeah, there must be must be something wrong with that person. But apart from that, nah, I've, um, I've, I've never really had any run-ins, eh? Had the odd heckler at a show or something, eh? Like, might run up and grab the mic. Oh, that happened like once, but nothing Someone serious, trying eh? to do a Kanye? Kind of, eh? It was, um, it was at a gig. It was actually at that Toker, it was at Toker Oil, talking about Toker oh, yeah. off mic. Yeah, yep. Um, it was a gig that the Hood Brothers were hosting and NZ was headlining, eh? And yeah, there were just some wild drunk dudes there, eh? And it was a crazy time, man. But I've never had like a serious run in a. Eh? Honestly, one thing I wish I learned is how to fight, eh, bro? I've, oh, pe- people do that for me. I don't fight, man. I oh well, there's no, like I watch too, a lot of, You're never too old to learn how to defend yourself. Yeah, bro. Like martial arts, eh? There's just so many benefits to it. Like teaching you discipline and how to overcome, you know, your fears and adversity and everything. What about you, bro? You do a bit of kung fu. <laughs> nah, bro. I, I'm keen to um, my mate Carlos Hicks, who's been on the show twice. Uh, he does MMA, yeah. so at some point I'm probably going to get some training from him. But when I actually have time, <laughs> if, you know, some spare time, that would be great. But um, unfortunately, work and this takes up quite a lot. Yeah, I can tell you've got a high work ethic. I respect it, bro. Oh, cheers. What bro. do you do for Mahi anyway? Uh, I can't really say on air. I'll tell you off air. Oh, yo. Yeah, dope. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, nice, yeah, I can't bro. really say on air. Okay, but, yeah, yeah. But the dream would be to do this full time, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, think, I, think, I think that's the same for like um, any musician, right? Oh, 100%. It's all about, you know, your main passion can still be a side hustle and you still have like a main source of income. Yeah. I always like to have one main source of income, you know, weekly. And then you might have, Two, you might have three other small side hustles, but music creativity is always the passion. But it's all about you're going to have to do shit you don't want to do to get where you want to be. And it's funny you mention that because I've met some real creative, like talented people, but unfortunately they just don't have the drive or the ambition. You know, like yeah, they'll just work on like maybe one song a week, maybe do one gig every couple of months, go on and off the Benny, and they're just they're not really getting to where they could be. And, like, that's just how it is. Like, you're going to have to do heaps of shit that you don't really want to do. Like, I don't I don't want to fucking wake up and go to work, but I have to, you know? Like, I want that money because that money helps feed the income, helps feed the drive, you know? I mean, with the musician, you know, there's a lot of expenses, you know, being creative. I mean, oh, I'm, sure, I'm I, sure this costed a bit, man. This is beautiful. Like, uh, Yeah, you know? it did. But I, a lot of people, unless you're doing it yourself, like, say, with a musician or any type of artist, they understand how much work goes into something, mm. like when they see another artist. To someone who's not up with that, they don't understand how long it takes to yeah. write just one song, yeah. you know, and then have it mixed and mastered. And if you're doing the production yourself as well, and you're doing everything else, you know, the engineering and, mm. and you're writing and you're crafting this album, like... It takes a lot of time. Oh, it's very time consuming. Eh, oh yeah, for up. sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, like, I I totally get it. I totally understand it because I come from that world. But like a lot of people don't, man. They're just like, oh yeah, so that's <laughs> whack, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, it's, uh, it's one of those things, eh, bro? Like, I think more people are starting to understand it. Have you noticed now that it seems like being like an on- like an entrepreneur? I kind of pronounced that wrong, but like. Being like kind of like your own boss is becoming way more trendy now. But it's also like the people are faking it too, eh, you know? Like, did you see overseas there's like this fake plane where you can go take photos to look like you're in your own PJ, like your own private jet, and look like you're straight balling? What? But it's, re- it's really just like a photo setup, like a studio. That must be in America. Yeah, it, 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 of it course, is, yeah. yeah. It's just like, it's just because being your own boss now is so trendy, people are like, faking these lifestyles that they're not really living well social media and, is like that yeah that's the thing like people don't 
like the photos might look nice, but no one really lives in the photos. You know what I mean? Like there's so much shit going on behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, or they only show, you know, the the highlights. Yeah, it's a highlight reel. Yeah. They don't really show the low the low times. Mm. Hmm. I think to be honest, if I wasn't doing this podcast, I wouldn't even be on social media. I, I was actually thinking that too about like, like just being a wild out there dude, like putting out zap and all that. Hey, sometimes, sometimes I. I've had enough of social media. Like sometimes I love it. Like there's so much benefits to it, but there are like, sometimes it's good to have a break. Eh? Sometimes I feel like I'm on there for too long or I'm over analyzing things. Eh? You know, like might've had a couple cones or something and I'm just scrolling through like too long, just wasting time, you know, but I love it though. It's a cool, it's, it's a way to put yourself out there and, um, you know, you can build an audience and all that. It's a double edged sword. That's yeah. what it is. It's good in some ways and it's bad in others. Yeah. 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 I guess it's like with anything though, eh? all in moderation, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you were um, you were saying off air because uh, I did ask you how you got your name. Do you just want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so it was it was in a media class in 2013, bro, and we were like designing logos, and I was just in my own zone, eh, bro, like thinking of thinking of rap names, eh. And then I just came up with Zap because I love it. It's just like it relates to you know like high energy electricity and it was all about that was the type of character i was trying to build and trying to become i always like knew the type of person i wanted to be i just hadn't completely like came out of that shell yet and yes yeah, so i i made zap and um hence like the lightning bolt on the neck and the z on the other side but Jeff. yeah I'm, I'm all about energy i feel like energy is contagious i feel like whether we know it or not we judge people off energy i mean it's one of the things like people's intent to and what their true ambitions are, but yeah, I just love it, bro. Like I'm naturally quite a high, quite a high alert dude. Quite do, high energy. Do you do you have a good sense of character? Like, can you can you meet someone and tell immediately whether they're a douche or not? Honestly, I used to think I was really good at it. I used to think like <laughs> I'm spot on. Like, nah, this dude's fake. Like, I getting, I don't know. Like, you know, some people like you kind of get a weird feeling around them. Yeah, like, and some people be like, this dude's a genuine good dude. But I'll be saying, like, this dude's a genuinely good dude. Then I have mates come to be like, nah, bro, he's a dick, man. Like, you're just way too happy all the time, eh? Like, you can't pick it up that this guy's an arsehole. I'm like, oh, what? He was nice to me. But um, I think it's actually because some people don't know how to approach people or, yep, yeah, like, everyone has to learn in life not to take everything personally. Like, it can be as simple as, like, getting a scene. Like, if someone just sees your message, you have to understand that that might not be malicious or on purpose. They might be genuinely having like a super busy day, full on. They might have forgot to get back to you. Like, it's not always like because they don't like you. Like, even sometimes I might forget to get back to people. I might have actually clicked on their message and forgot to get back to them. Like, we don't need to always take things personal. But as to like face to face, I used to think I was the man at it, like detecting people's character. I still do, eh? But then I have friends like, nah, this guy's a dick, man. You're like, how did you not pick that up? I was like, oh, he seemed good to me, you know? What about you? You quite a. Oh, I, think I, I, I think I've gotten better from doing this, mm. from doing this show. I think I've gotten better. Yeah. Um, I think for the most part, I'm pretty good. Yeah. There's some people like I can meet straight away and know I'm like, dude, there's something off about this, <laughs> this guy eh? yeah. or this girl. There's just something not yeah. quite right. Something's yeah. not right there. Yeah. You know? Um, like they're a rapist or something. Oh, oh, nah. <laughs> that's a, that's a bit too far, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, nah, but like they just they're just a bit weird, you know. Yeah. But then some of it, I don't think like I think from growing up in Auckland and then moving outside of Auckland, <clears throat> I think I've realised how come there's such a massive uh, differentiation between Auckland and the rest of the country because yeah. Auckland's kind of like this big behemoth thing that kind of just swallows everything else. And then everyone else is kind of like out doing their own thing. But um, I think from growing up in Auckland, you you learn the ability to interact with multiple cultures and how to interact with different people from all walks of life. When yeah. you're going to a place like Timaru or something, yeah. then like people from there, they're not going to fully understand mm. or get that 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 side of people because they haven't interacted with them. Yeah. So as a result, they might actually be scared or nervous or anxious, and they just come off as a weirdo, mm. come across as a weirdo when that's not necessarily who True. they are. Yeah, yeah. Especially like, you know, if you're if you're like a real fan of someone, eh? 
and then like you meet them for the first time, you kind of you're really judging your behavior. You're like, oh, I hope I didn't, you know, freak him out or weird him out or anything. Even even when I came in here for the first time, like just now, bro, I was like, kind of had to take it all in because I've you know I've been watching it for a while and I was I was really fascinated to see like whereabouts the location of it was where you had this too, like if it was in a certain bedroom, if it was in a lounge, if it was in like a you know a, a secondary house like a garage kind of like this. It's incredible, bro. But going back to like what you're saying about meeting people of different cultures and walks of life, I kind of had that too because. I, I went to a private school for primary school and it was mainly, or it was pretty much all like really wealthy people. Like I'd say, you know, pretty much everyone there was a millionaire. Like you go to these kids' houses for birthday parties and stuff. Their houses are crazy. I'm talking like flying foxes, tennis courts, spa pools, swimming pools, like, like own maids, like personal chefs. It was insane. But then my parents, you know, I was getting quite dear. They couldn't afford it anymore. And I had you no know, real good parents, but they're quite, quite strong Christians. So, they really wanted me to go there for primary school. But then for intermediate, I went to a public school and it was a complete change of scene. Eh? Like a way more diverse group of people, people from all different walks of life, different races, different cultures. And I got on with everyone, but it was real fascinating to see how the tides turned. So I've, I kind of already at a very young age had already met so many different walks of life and groups of people. And uh, it was funny because... People used to call me a like a, a wannabe gangster, like an intermediate. Bro, I got that as well. Just because I, I would always <clears> hang out. Like, I, I loved everyone, but, like, I was always drawn to, like, the dudes that were, like, making the beats and doing the rhymes and stuff. And not to bring race into it, but they more most of them were Maori. And there was, and yeah. I was just like, I was like the little white boy straggler that would, like, go up to the rubbish bin and start, like, banging <laughs> on the bin, eh? Like, well, if you yeah. think of term, in terms of the demographic of hip-hop, within New Zealand at least, it's primarily... Pacifica and Maori. Yeah. They're the, yeah. They're the, the big demo demographic. Yeah. So, and that's like not a racist thing. It's nah, just, it nah. is what it is. Yeah. yeah. You know? Would you say that Pacific Island and Maori people are a lot more confident than the average like Pakeha? Or am I buzzing out? Like I feel like they have more, I feel like a lot of them seem a lot more out there, eh? If that makes sense. Um, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like growing up in West Auckland, I didn't, get that yeah. um no I, I don't know it depends um i guess i was more thinking of school days and i think now it's a bit different like, yeah i mean I mean, heaps of out there pakihas now I mean, yeah i mean i will say this most of the weirdos that i've met are whites yeah i don't think i've ever met or oh, like <laughs> maybe like a small few <laughs> of maldives or yeah pacifica people that are, are a bit off but that's like extremely rare yeah uh whereas uh, quite a lot of white people, I'm just like. <laughs> but that might be due to a sheltered lifestyle, right? Mm. From my, I mean, growing up, hanging around a lot of Polynesians, they're quite family-oriented. There's a lot of family interaction. And so as a result, you learn to kind of interact. And they've, they've got these big, massive families, right, where traditionally white people don't have such a big uh, connection with the family unit or the uh, extended family unit. So as a result, they probably don't interact with as many people. Well, that's my guess. I could be wrong, but hey. Yeah, I don't know. That's just something I noticed, and I've, I'm sure I heard um, this being talked about on another podcast. But anyway, it's a fascinating thing, eh, bro? And I'm still buzzing out at this studio. <laughs> like, it's insane. I was also wondering, like, did you grow up in quite a strict family, or were they quite loose and let you do what you wanted, or? Nah, bro, I came from a Christian family. Okay, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes two of us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I, I went to church. I did all, I did all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not so much these days. You ever I mean, got a, my you got a youth group, bro. When you, were yeah, bro, I did. Oh, all I love that. youth group. Youth hey. group. I served in the church. Yeah. Um, I used to do sound for the church up in Auckland. Um, oh, good on you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, so noble man. I was on fire for God, as, yeah. so to speak. But oh, not these, you. not these days, not these days. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a sinner or a, a backslider, as my dad would call it. But oh, um, I'm sure they still love you, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, um, like, I, I kind of got a bit, a bit of a uh, kind of a revelation when I was in India, because yeah. just going to a completely different environment. And seeing completely different religions, because mm. the thing I've noticed with most most religious people, and they're not going to like this, but 
most religious people only know about their religion, right? They're experts in their religion, but they're not expert in anyone else's. So as a result of that, there's what you'd call probably a confirmation bias or, uh, you know, that they, they validate what they already believe because they've been emotionally conditioned to believe what they believe. So because they've, they've, they've brought themselves, and I'm speaking from experience because I used to be like this, and you end up having like tunnel vision in terms of how you see the world because you can only see it through that lens. Ah, yeah, yeah. So like, because if you think about it, Christians think their religion is the right religion. Hindus think their religion is the right religion. Muslims think their religion is mm. the, the right religion. But all those groups, they haven't spent any time probably looking into other religions. Yeah, like I've um, you know, I've got fantastic Christian mates. I, um, I've met some real good Christians. It's more the extremely strict conservative ones that um, I tend to stay away from a bit. I find them a little bit too judgmental, you know. <laughs> but um, nah, it's just one of those things, eh, man? There's but but everyone has a different walk of life. So exactly, if if that's all you've known from a very young age, you're gonna be like, you know, well, you're wrong. I'm right. Yeah, yeah. Thing. So have you gotten uh, judgment for doing hip hop? Because are you are you a white dude like 100 percent Pakia? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I don't know, eh, bro. It's I mean, I I probably did. I mean, of course I have, but. Anything negative, I don't know. I eh? like. I feel like the way I come across to people, they kind of just vibe with it, eh? and they can't. Well, that's good. Can't, that's good. Can't, they can't really I hate it. I didn't get that shit. Yeah, yeah. I got a bit of racial prejudice. They're like, oh, he's just trying to be an Eminem yeah. wannabe. Sort I of definitely, thing. I definitely did when I was younger, like as a kid, intermediate, like just banter, like the wannabe gangster dude. Um, Were you rocking like Jesus pieces and bandanas and stuff? Nah, I was just. <laughs> I was just always popping beats and doing freestyles, eh? And, um, but no, I don't really think I have, eh? I think now, especially, like, there's so many more white dudes trying to do this, too. Yeah, I like, think it's, I think it's accepted. I think, I think when I was real young, the only, like, white dude, it was more like American, like, Mac Miller was like a, like a more predominantly known white guy chasing it. Apart from, it used to just be like, people would always compare a white guy to Eminem, eh? Yep. Back in the day, but like, Yo, this guy's like Eminem. But now, you know, there's there's qu quite a few white artists, say, eh, kind of thing. I noticed that you think Eminem's the goat. Oh, I said that in pieces, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I definitely I definitely think he's up there, eh, bro? I think uh I think he's a highly respectable person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about you, bro? You got a top five, top ten, top fifteen? Yeah, I mean I'd probably put M, Puck, Nas and mine. Um Yep. I mean, there's a, there's a whole bunch of other artists that I respect as well. Kendrick is someone I enjoy from he's the new been school. Quiet, eh, bro? What's yeah. he up to? Kendrick. He's and... like a little hobbit, eh? He's a little caveman, that dude. Yeah. He's real yeah. good, though, eh? He's... Yeah. He is. I think he just doesn't care about the clout or the fame, eh? He just cares about the craft. It seems like it. Like he well, you can you can tell. You can tell who cares about the yeah. fame and who cares about the craft of what they're doing. Yeah. Yep. So, what do you say to Kashi was? He, is he number two for you? Nah, fuck, nah. That, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 oh, nah. Like, I, I can be a, honest, I don't, I don't listen to as much hip-hop as I used to because I kind of feel the new school. I'm just like, uh, I can't vibe with these dudes. They just all sound the same. They don't have any bars. Their yep. lyrical skill is that of, like, a five-year-old. It's like... Uh, I reckon they've gone... I reckon the newer, newer school's way better. I reckon... I feel like around 2016, 2017... What you're saying came out like all this trash, like these, and they sucked ass. But now, I feel like these newer dudes, like you know, like YBN Corday, like Little Skies, like these newer dudes, they have a better sense of like rhyming and cadence and flow and constructing songs. Yeah, yeah. But there, I know there's some there's some trash out there. Right? It's oh, funny. Yeah. Well, I also feel because I'm getting older as well. I'm like, oh, am I turning into the dinosaur? Where yeah. like I'm just like, no, this is not how it used to be. Yeah. You know, it used to be good. It used to be about the production and yeah, good lyrics, yeah. and now it's all about <laughs> booties and. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the oldest old school dudes still rapped about that, you know, like booties and stuff. But oh yeah, but in yeah. a more in a more clever way though, eh? Like they'd construct it in a more technical way, and it was like it put more effort and work into it, eh? Oh yeah, I mean, I was never a huge fan of that stuff anyway. <clears throat> you more but, of the uh, conscious. You like the conscious rap. I like, I'm yo. a big I'm a big um, fan and an admirer of 
people that do stuff that's out of the box. So say, for example, Nas with Rewind. Yeah. That's really out of the box. Um, even Eminem with like Stan. Um, Kendrick with like how much a dollar costs. Like just, just stuff that's kind of um, really creative, really. Um, that's not to say that I don't like the, you know, the, the chick songs and, you know, yeah. the club songs and the <laughs> gangster stuff. But yeah. yeah, I think as I've gotten older as well, my tastes have changed. But with that being said, I mean, you can't beat the classics. Yeah, but I find certain gangster songs like, I'm not a gangster. I've never been in a gang. I have no criminal history. But sometimes I listen to that shit, bro. And, you know, I want to pack a swing on someone, eh? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Some of this, like, um, you know, Pop Smoke? Yeah. Bro, that, like, that's like my type of gym music. Eh? He gets me amped, bro. That, um, she liked the way that I move. Or she liked the way that I dance. Like, talking about Pop, like, I mean, rest in peace. Like, he, obviously, he died from that lifestyle. But, yeah, now I can see how dudes get into that shit, hey? It gets me amped, bro. Are you are you a fan of Bone Thugs, Twister? Yep, more so Twister. Um, I only know a couple of Bone Thug songs, eh, to be honest. They're, they're, they're more like melody fast rapping, eh? They are. They are. Yeah. They were a heavily um they were heavily an influence on me when when I was doing it. Um but yeah, like yeah. just hearing some of your stuff, I, I hear a bit of Bone Thugs and Twister. Yeah, no in I, it because you you're into the 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 double time. Yeah. Yeah, no, Twister, yeah, he's a bit of a character, eh? He's another animal, that dude. Yeah, like, yeah. He's insane. So do you do you start like when you're writing, do you kind of work out the flow first and then do the words and fill in the blanks? Like Tech Nine does that. Yeah, like I, I, I rap it out loud and go over it and I find like the syllables are like little jigsaw pieces and you've got to fit them into the bar. Yeah. Or else it'll be off time, it won't flow properly. So I, I just keep repeating it over and over while the beat's on loop. Excuse me. Until I get it right. Like when I first started writing, it would take me so long just to write one bar. Because it would be so out of time. Like, when I was real young, I used to think, like, oh, I could just write it down. And then the way that I write it down when I say it, it's going to sound just like that. But it doesn't. It sounds all over the place. Mm. So I just repeat the bars out loud and then break down certain words or change certain words with less syllables so they can fit into that bar. And then, yeah, I, I always try to change the flow as well. Like, even though, even, even if it might be double time, like, I try have a flow variation, like, Every eight bars or so, just to switch it up, just so people aren't listening to the same type of flow. Not so you're hearing the. Yeah, yeah. What about you, bro? I bet you've got some bars on the tucker. I bet you got a sweet sixteen ready, like somewhere. Like oh yeah, yeah. Like if you if it comes to it, I like I um I haven't written a verse in. I don't know. It must be like a year now. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, like I can do all the double time stuff and. Yeah. I used to try and switch it up. Flow wise, yeah. But I was more into the trying to think outside the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did a I did a song. I think one of the last songs I did before I hung up the mic. <laughs> hung up the mic. Like, um, <laughs> like was a... I did a song called "The Chronicles of Cancer," which was basically Ooh, speaking sounds... speaking. So um, I lost my mum to cancer in two thousand and four. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but so what I did is I wrote a song where I'm speaking from the perspective of cancer and as it's slowly destroying my mum. So I wrote it from that. And it's just, it's just actually just one verse that That's just goes for the whole track. Bro. So it's about, yeah. it's about two minutes, but I'm rapping it. And what I did before that song was I researched cancer, like all the, the terminologies and how it actually works and how it actually grows and yeah. forms and then spreads to the rest of the body. So that was something that I thought of. Um, that was that was one that I did, and I did another one called Sexy Doctor. Um, whereas, because I used to work for ACC at one oh, point. Oh, you naughty boy! <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> and um, I um, got a hold of every single pain injury, yeah. every single injury within the ACC database, and then I basically had it had it there like in front of me, and then I used that as a basis of a song. So the song was me going to the doctor to try and impress her by telling her I had all these different injuries <laughs> and I was using the ACC reference guide as like, you know, so I was like, oh, you know, I've got avulsion fractures and I've got paronychia <laughs> on my toe and, yeah. you know, I've, I've torn my rotator cuff and all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was what I used to do. Um, but I used to get frustrated sometimes because people wouldn't 
it would just go over people's heads. Yeah. That's the problem sometimes. I think a lot of people just hear, listen to the beat. They don't hear the lyrics. Oh, especially with some of the newer stuff, eh? I think I think it is changing. It's almost getting back to more like that lyrical substance. Like a song like that one you wrote, that would have an insane amount of like replay value. Like you could play that, like an, a new listener could play that time and time again and they'll discover something new. Like, oh, I didn't get that he said that, but now I've heard it. Or like you'd probably have all these punchlines in there. Because yeah, that's a super deep, Deep song, bro. Yeah, yeah. Especially and the, um, and the trying to include punchlines within it as well. Oh, bro, yeah. But then, like, because I'm a huge fan of battle rap. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm uh... one out since it. Eh? There's some <laughs> mad. Oh, do you know that bro, guy? Would you, would, you, would you ever? Yeah, would you ever battle? Oh no! I'll, I'll be come on. Bro. I'll, I'll be honest, bro. There's something. I'd actually, I'd You'd have to... be so good at it. You know why? Because you're high energy. Yeah, I know. Like I've I've done it at parties, bro. But I found that I've got a really like I got to really dislike the person to do it like i, I find we'll just out, start a beef and, and i don't know the limits too like are you allowed to talk about someone's like dead grandma or i probably like, are there limits uh, nah i probably if, wouldn't do that wouldn't do that. yeah like is it what are the ethics in battle rap bro like well i mean you can do that but it's yeah. it's frowned upon particularly these days so there was a guy exceed he was like this indian i, battle, I know that dude yeah yeah, yeah, yeah indian yeah. battle rapper and he like he goes off. Eh? He went OTT. So he's he, a wild boy. Yeah. So he he got a um, he stood on the Samoan flag like <laughs> mid battle and stuff. And I'm like, bro, why That's would you crazy. do that? Yeah. Every Polynesian is going to be looking for you. I'm like, you better move out of Auckland, bro. Oh, is that why he left? Because of that? Because he doesn't live in Auckland now. He was living in Canada. I think he lives in Auckland again though. Yeah. But oh, okay. like really undercover. I don't. I don't actually know. I'm just <laughs> you know theorizing here. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know where he lives. Yeah. And if I did, I probably wouldn't say for his sake. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like I. But there are creative ways to diss someone. Oh, but I reckon battle rapping is insanely clever. Do you prefer a cappella like how it normally is, or do you prefer it with the beat? Because I've seen some people say that they prefer like listening to battle rap with the beat, like the eight miles. Yeah. Style. I prefer it a cappella. You can really hear the punchlines. Yeah, better. yeah. I think you can be more creative with mm. a cappella. Yeah. Um. That's not to say, like, I think kind of at the time, yeah, it was cool, but it's it's evolved so much now that, yeah, I, I, I love acapella. When it's done right, I mean, yeah. um, there's some, some insanely talented battle rappers in New Zealand yeah. that I don't feel get the shine that they deserve. Yeah. But, bro. Do you remember when you they... got it, bro, I could easily get you in if you want to do bro, it. Bro, it's funny because I got offered to, I was at a gig, this was, this was actually before COVID, but I got offered to host like an upcoming battle rap event. I have no idea what it was called. I have no idea when it was, but I got offered to host it with um this other rapper called Fresco. I don't know if you heard of Fresco. That name rings a bell. Yeah. So I, I don't know what's happening with that, but do you know, oh, who was it? This Kiwi dude battled this, I believe he's an American dude called Disaster. A while yeah, back. bro. Scholar. Scholar and Disaster. That's insane, bro. That guy Disaster is insane. So is Scholar. Scholar's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I, in my opinion, I think Disaster's the GOAT. Yeah, in my opinion, I yeah. like he freestyled that. That wasn't even real. Bro, I don't know how he does it, eh? Bro, if you watch any of his battles overseas, yeah. he's he's next level, man. The thing I respect about battle rappers, the humiliation you have to go through, like they might be saying things that half the crowd or even some of your close mates might not know about you, but they've just dug deep and they're just spitting it like <laughs> in your face, like they're spitting saliva at you and talking about like how much a piece of shit you are. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. But the thing is like uh you get a lot of clout from it and you get a lot of shine. Oh, like, you do, it, bro. It, it would definitely help your music um yeah. career, but uh because it's it's growing, you know. And and, yeah. and like shout outs to Dila, man. I mean, he's getting these internationals over. And the Wendy's ad, he did that Wendy's ad? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the man. Bro. I love that dude. He's funny. I I find him super funny like I used to just be chilling in my room just watching his live streams he'll do. Do you remember his live streams? Oh, he still does them. Like he'll get another just a random dude to call in on the line and then battle another dude. And it wasn't oh it was so entertaining, bro. And D would like be judging it. That was crazy. It was so entertaining. No, but he, uh, shout outs to him, man. I mean he's he's really carried. I the think scene. he started that. I think D start did he start the N Z battle rap scene? Was it D I think he did. Yeah. The one out I scene? don't wanna I don't wanna say that he did because yeah. I don't know hundred percent sure. Yeah. I've known the guy for ages and I don't actually yeah. I think he did. I, yeah. I really think he did, but then if he didn't and I'm saying that he did, then yeah, someone will be pissed off at me. Yeah, that's quite a touchy uh Yeah, yeah. But um obviously he works with a team, um, mainly uh, another guy, Suda. But yeah, I mean the the, the scene's really growing and like, yeah, man, honestly, bro, you should do it. You bro, should do it. 
I might have to. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hook it up for you. <laughs> I'll hook it up for Some you because I know. Telling me, eh? like, I just pull up here to do like I'll, another I'll, podcast. Eh? You go like this I'll massive post, dude. I'll post this clip in the one ounce thing and um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like yo, he says he can drop all of you, like. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, if you're gonna if you're gonna go in there, man, you're going in there with wolves. So you you better be you better. Oh, bro, bring they, your A I've game. Seen, you I've, can't. You can't. Exactly, bro. I've seen some dudes and they um. They come for your head, bro. They come for your head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Has has COVID, because what I was wondering is, you know how you've done a lot of Zoom calls with your podcast? Yeah. Has that, does that affect like um, the flow of things at all? Or is it the same? Or does it not have like the same aroma as like when someone's in here? You know what I mean? Like, is there a slight delay when you're talking to people back and forth? No, or? I mean, there's pros and cons to it. Pros, it doesn't take me as long to edit. Uh and I don't, I don't have to be so cautious about everything. So, like yeah. right now, even though that I'm talking to you, I'm monitoring, um, monitoring the audio, the levels, plus the video cameras while trying to have a conversation with you. Mm. Um, with Zoom, I don't really have to worry about that so much because it's already just there. The only problem is like if the person who's on the other side is not wearing headphones, there, there can be audio leakage. Oh, okay. Which can throw me off sometimes, but um, yeah, and then obviously the audio quality isn't as good. And being an audio engineer, like I'm a real, I'm a real stickler for that. I'm just like, Ugh. that's awesome how you're an engineer and you're doing this because you know it's going to make the quality so much better. Um, because yeah, the most recent Zoom one I watched with you was the one of Zero Fucks Clothing. That was cool. That was a good insight, bro. Like seeing how a Kiwi does his clothing and all that. And like, yeah, yeah. Because I thought about starting a clothing brand at some point. So yeah. it was good talking to him because I'm like, hmm. honestly, I learn a lot from doing this, this show, eh? Yeah, bro. I mean, people, there's a lot of people that want me to just do hip hop, but I'm like, I don't want to just do hip hop. Nah, you want to be more diverse, eh? Yeah, open up the yeah. And I don't want to just talk about hip hop all the time. Like, um, I mean, like, yeah, this, like, this is the first hip hop episode I've done since Tyson Tyler, whenever. That was. That was like I've seen that ago. too, bro. Yeah, yeah. Bro, he's the man. I'll say this, man. Like, he's a guy I admired, you know, from, from a distance for quite a while. And I was actually worried when I was going to be talking to him because he, he was someone that I greatly respected. Yeah. And I was thinking, far, I hope this guy is not an asshole. I hope, like, my world doesn't come crashing, <laughs> no, crashing down gonna... because he turns out to be a dick. But he's not, bro. Like, he was the yeah. nicest guy. And, um, like yeah, he's he's the nicest dude out, man. I got so much love for that guy. Um, he's a he's a bit of an animal. Eh? He's a good rapper, bro. He's insane. Yeah, yeah. And I think I, I think he's still he's. Uh, yeah, is he still active? I I didn't. Yeah, he, he's he probably still, mentioned uh, that. He probably. Too, um, he, I don't think he raps as much as he used to, primarily because he's got a family. But yeah, I got a lot of respect for that guy, yeah. and um, I think he's incredibly underrated. Oh, he's insane. He was with that group, Illegal Music, wasn't he? It was like K One, Tyson Tyler. Jay Williams wasn't yep. he under that? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Nah, he he's he was under that umbrella. Yeah. Uh, but he he yeah he's OG man, OG. But he lives in Brisbane now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So next time I go to Brisbane, I'll try and link up with him for sure. Whenever that happens, post COVID, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's that screwed everything up. But did you? What did you do during lockdown? Oh, so I was just still getting paid for my day job. Very kindly. Um, <laughs> they they still provide. Lucky for some. Yeah. That, oh, the Shout out to um, Mount ITM, great, great group of guys, great team, great organization, great corporation. Yeah, they just still paid forty hours a week for the month. So yeah, it was it was really good, eh, bro? I think it was a month. It's like five weeks or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally, I, I don't want to be insensitive to anyone. Like I don't know, but I, I really enjoyed lockdown, eh? Like, oh, I, I'm sure some people didn't. Some yeah. people didn't. Yeah. I mean, int introverts would have loved lockdown. They would have been like, ha, ah, yeah, I don't have to see anybody. Yeah, because even though, like, I'd say, you know, I'm quite a people person. But like it was just so nice to have a break from not not working like 40 50 55 hour weeks and just being able to knuckle down on the craft and still get paid and you know everything but you know i, I just wanted to tiptoe around that because i know some people had their businesses shut down and it was hard for them to make a living yeah. so i, I didn't want to no no but i think i think people know what you're saying so yeah. it's all good yeah 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 totally understand so you've lived in a lot of places auckland tauranga wellington yeah. where else um, Here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, I think those three are the main ones, eh? So, out of living in those three places, what's your favourite? Wellington, eh, bro? Wellington by far. Just just the vibe, the creative, like, artistic vibe they've got there mm. is, like, off the charts, eh? And I feel like I really discovered myself there. Like, that's when I first started performing. It's when I first started putting out, like, 
videos of me like revving on trains and shit. Like, <laughs> I love a day. I love Wellington. Like, uh, definitely changed me for the best. Yeah. Wellington is like the most beautiful city, bro. I was gonna ask, man. I you love, still you yeah. still go clubbing and all that? You're a bit of a clubber. <laughs> nah, bro. Those days are well beyond <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. behind me, bro. I mean, like I have a missus and stuff now, man. Like, nah, those those days are well and truly gone. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't do clubbing anymore. Like, I feel like I've gone clubbing a couple of times in Hamilton, and um, I just feel old, bro. I'm just like, man, bro. I am so out of place here. Bro, I'm like, went, I'm like an old dude compared I'll, to these. people. I went clubbing like this was even like two years ago, bro, and I felt like a retard. Oh, am I allowed to say that word? Felt like a retard. You can say whatever. Oh, easy, bro. Yeah, easy. I never know. You know, not saying you, but like what your audience, you know, finds offensive. Oh, well, if they're offended too. Bad. I'm, ki I'm kidding. Yeah. But um, bro, I felt like an old man in there, and I was only like maybe 22, 23. And well, hey, man, nuts. we can. I'll go clubbing with you, bro. We can both be retards together. Freaking hey, let's go to let's go to Hamilton, bro. Let's hit up um, what are the clubs here? Outback Bar One Hundred One. Yeah, Outback yeah. Bar One Hundred One, the Bank. Uh, it used to be the hood, but I think it's changed now to Coy Coyote. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 There's a couple. Oh, there's one called the Book Club. I think the it's book called Club. But it's funny because like you look at it and you're like the Book Club. I thought it was a library, and then I saw like music pumping in it, and I was like, this is weird. Then you go upstairs and like behind the door is like a strip club, and I was <laughs> like, I was like, oh, okay, won't yeah. go in there. Um, but yeah, no, I suppose the good thing about all the clubs in Hamilton is they're all situated in one place. Mm. Whereas like say in Auckland, um, they're all over the place, man. Yeah, and they're quite dear in Auckland too, eh? Like, bro, everything's dear in Auckland, bro. That's why I left. What's I wrong I with Auckland, bro? Like, what's up with the traffic and all that, bro? Like, how do people live there? I feel sorry for their mental health. You might as well put like a portolo in the boot or something, eh? Like, well, I reckon it's, two, it's, two, it's two things. So if you grew up in Auckland... That's all you know. Yeah. So you true. got nothing to compare it to. Yeah. And you don't know what you don't know. So it makes sense. The other thing is Auckland has more immigrants now than Kiwis. Does it? So, yes. There's more immigrants than like have... Asians. Or just everything. I love it how you said immigrants and you automatically <laughs> go to Asians. But um, yes. <laughs> no, well, I, I yeah. love Asians. I mean they're in a good yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Chinese, Indians. But then, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then a lot of a lot of people from the islands as well. And then you've kind of got like people from Europe and um because obviously like people say like Wellington's the capital, but Auckland is the culture capital now. Oh, is it? Of culture? Well, in terms of multiculture. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. multiculturalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so as a result, yeah, you've got a lot of immigrants there. I mean, I went to India, man, and like Mumbai, which I think is like a city of 20 million people. Yeah. Like the traffic there is insane. <laughs> Insane. Are they man. handy road rages, bro? Like they have canes and shit, and they just start fighting each other. Or nah. Although I do, I I saw two. Uh, this is funny because this happened on the day that I arrived there. We we're in the um my partner's city, Baroda, and um we went to this grocery store. I think it's called Dmart. And then we, we were just get we well we got there and it was during Diwali, so it was just insane. It was just people everywhere, and I was like, "What the hell, man?" And then we get out, and she and we were getting off the scooter, and like two people were trying to get into these two ladies were trying to get into her park, yeah. And like they were both like two Muslim ladies, and they were just started going at it, like <laughs> arguing and stuff with each other. I'm like, "Man, I've only been here like two hours, yeah, yeah. like yeah." I hear the weed's pretty good over there. I was talking to a cab driver, and he reckons they just grow pounds of it over there. Is this true? Can you confirm this or? I don't know. You'd have to ask my missus, man. Oh, yeah. I might have to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, possibly. Yep. Maybe. You into any substances or are you like a sober man? Or... I'm a sober man, bro. I respect that, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a sober I... man. That's not to say that like I, if people want to do substances, I mean, probably don't do like meth and stuff. I mean, keep it to the bro, low, then... lower side of yeah. the substances. I always knew how bad meth was from a young age, just from... Like, I know it was Hollywood, and I know Hollywood can exaggerate and falsely portray things, but I knew meth was was bad. But know? I think, like, I sometimes think to my, like, I get all philosophical sometimes, probably been, like, listening to too much Jordan Peterson or something. But um, Oh, he is the man of debating man. that dude. <laughs> yeah. But, like, hey. I think, I sometimes think to myself, I'm like, like, do do we do stuff sometimes because we actually want to do it? Or have we kind of unconsciously being conditioned to do it like if you think of drinking right do a lot of people drink because they actually want to drink or are they drinking because the society has taught them that that's the norm yeah i think for a lot of people drinking it like it makes them feel comfortable you know 
Like yeah, they're, but they're, but but like, have they been conditioned? Yeah, to oh, that they definitely have been conditioned to it. They yeah. would have seen, they would have seen their parents doing it probably from a young age. Their older siblings. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Um, because yeah, I personally don't drink, but I've like, like, I've got my best mates. You know, they love to sink piss. I used to love to do it. I used to when I was like 15, 16, Um, my mate's older brother was saying that he thinks I'm gonna become like an alcoholic. Like I would love it, bro. Like I would rely on it. And I would have like the best nights with it. Like I'd be way more confident. Like I could rap. I wouldn't be able to rap in front of people sober when I was like 15, 16. But I would sink piss. And I used to get given shit because I'd drink the cruises. You know those cruises, bro? Those <laughs> yeah, yeah. like different colored cruises. But, but I started, you know, like just discovering myself that I was going down a wrong path. Eh? Like I, I can't rely on a substance yeah, to yeah. do what I want to do, you know, to do my passion. I think a lot of people do. And I think in New yeah. Zealand in particular, like we have a bad substance abuse problem. Mm. And I think like, I think people don't deal with the root causes of their problems. And so they'll use something like alcohol to mask the issue. Yeah. 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 And now, I mean, that leads into, I'm, I want to talk to Chloe Swarbrick at some point about this cannabis. Oh, bro, reform. you two would murder that. I, bro, you have but, to get her in. Oh yeah. I'm I'd, a fanboy. What's that? I'm a fanboy of like obviously you and her. So oh okay, so that's like a double double whammy. I feel like just the way she communicates, she's so elegant and classy, and like I've never seen her lose like a, I guess you could say a debate, or you know, like oh she's incredible. She's she's like quite a character. Yeah. What what what's your opinion on you know the legalization of marijuana? You for it against it? You don't know? I think like? it's well to be honest, like it's. I don't think it's a, it's really it's really complicated. I don't think it's as simple as like yes or no. Mm. Like in terms of decriminalization, definitely needs to happen. Um, but yeah, when you're talking I've... about legislation, there's actually a lot more involved. And like the legislation itself was kind of rough. Yeah. Like with the um, because I was I was talking to a lot of my mates who who smoke heavily, <laughs> and some of them, and some of them were saying that they were still going to get it from the black market anyway. Oh, really? Yeah, primarily because the THC levels were going like, even though it was going to be legal, it was only going to be for a certain amount of THC. Yeah. So basically, you're paying a higher amount for a lower THC. Oh, I thought the THC was going to be high with the. N so well, this is from what I understand. Oh, okay. I mean, pff, I'm no cannabis expert, but um, <laughs> from what I understand is the THC level was going to be low yeah. and you're paying more for it. Oh, true. Shit. So so a lot of people would just go, well, we'll still get it from the black market because yeah. it'll be cheaper and it's a higher dosage, more potent. True. I was just really excited, eh, bro, because I want to know what I'm smoking, eh? Because a lot of this black market weed, you know, it's outdoors and it's been sprayed with, you know, like pesticides and all that to keep like the possums and the little birds off it. Yeah. So... To be like, sometimes when I get high, I, I try not to think about it, but I'm like, I don't actually know what's been sprayed on this, eh? You know, like, I don't actually know what I'm smoking. I feel like. But that could be the same for anything, though. Like, alcohol, yeah. food. That's a good point, eh? I just feel like I'm smoking it, like I'm burning it, like I'm lighting up the chemicals, you know? I know this is just me being paranoid, eh, bro? But yeah, I, I mean, I do hope it gets legalized. Like, like, like Chloe was saying, eh? You know, people do it anyway. People are going to get it anyway. It's already a free for all. Oh it's yeah, I, like if it's going to be legalized, you just want it to be legalized, right? Yeah, definitely, eh? Like, because the the pro the other problem was like that legislation wasn't even a hundred percent going to be the legislation. That was kind of like a draft, and they could have made the legislation better or worse. Like you didn't know where they were going to go with it. Um, and like if I do talk to Chloe, I'm probably going to say it like this. But I think when it comes to polarizing subjects like this. You have to do it like the frog in the boiling water, meaning if you try and put in a policy that's too radical, too fast, people are like, no, nah. mm. whereas that's like, like you put a frog in boiling water, they just jump out straight away, right? Whereas if you put a frog in normal water and then you slowly turn it up, then they get cooked to death. Oh, you've been cooking your frogs, bro. <laughs> so what I'm saying by that is if... If basically you implement small little bits of legislation in regards to cannabis over time, yeah, then people are more accustomed to it. They're more customized to it and they've kind of adapted to it somewhat. Yeah, it was pretty close too, eh? Wasn't it? It was like I was down to the wire. Yeah, yeah. 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 So is it so true it was that it was nice mainly edge. was it mainly the older demographic that voted no? Is that true or am I No, no, I, I don't think so. I think I know a lot yeah, of young yeah. people that uh, yeah. voted no. I know a lot of people that voted no. Um, yeah. 
I actually don't know that many people that voted yes. Most of the people I know who voted yes were hip hop be- people. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, but um, yeah, weed and hip hop they go hand in go. hand. Yeah, it seems yeah, so. Yeah. Well, don't you? I probably I can probably count on my hand the amount of hip hop people or artists I know that don't smoke weed. <laughs> As opposed to people that do, yeah, yeah. Back to the frogs, though. Do you you've you've had frog before? You cook the legs and shit, or no, nah, bro? I haven't eaten frog. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, was just, like, oh, it's just an analogy. That was such like a tight metaphor, bro. Like the way you described, it, I was like, man, the bro must be cooking frogs and shit. Nah, like, well, it's the, it's the a pot. known it's a known. Yeah, I was just trying to use it as a comparison. Yeah, nah. Yeah, yeah, that and that's deep. probably that's probably how I'd put put it to Chloe. Yeah, but like, I mean, somebody who is it? Somebody said to me, "Oh, are you going to debate her?" I'm like, well, no, I'm not going to debate her. And first, yeah. like, first of all, yeah, well, no, I'm not going to debate her because I don't want to talk to her for an hour just debating her on cannabis. You want to rap battle her? <laughs> I wonder if she what do you do, bro? If if you got her on here, then you just like chuck on a beat while she starts talking, and, she and then it's your bars. turn, and you just go at her. You're like, yo, Chloe. You don't even know. No, nah, I wouldn't diss Chloe, man. <laughs> nah, Chloe's incredible. Like, uh, she I'm represent- a fan of Chloe. She she's- represents the youth. Yeah, yeah. I she's highly loved a. She like, is. You know oh, how... she's highly hated too. Is she? Oh, oh, I, I, I haven't seen the I hate. I know people that hate her. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, hey, and look, I'm I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I'm 100% Chloe because I'm not. There's some stuff that she says yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't agree with that. But that's yeah. that's any politician. Yeah. I think she I knows know. how to work like social media and all that too, eh? which is cool. Seeing it like a fresh youngin, like yes, knowing well, how she's to do the, it. She's very talented. She's the second most followed politician behind Jacinda. Hey. Yep. Oh, true. Do you find it's funny how quickly the love hate train can turn on you? Like, I f- I thought that like Jacinda majority like highly loved her, especially during that terrible terrorist attack, and they were posting the the memes of like Jacinda holding the baby and you know, saying how much they love her and all that. Then as soon as she announced that second lockdown, this hate train came saying that like she's helping the pedophiles like take kids <laughs> underground and shit. And like they were going at her, and the conspiracy theories were off the chain. And I was like, but is just it a, a year ago, they're saying how much they loved her. You know? Is it a majority though, or a vocal minority? I don't know, but like, I feel like I have heard that social media can have like these echo chambers. But like, just who I follow, they're Bro, on both sides, so it's like echo chambers hard. Yeah. Like you go on Reddit, the New Zealand subreddit. Yeah, it's left as bro. They're oh. like really pro green, like greens as. Like with a little bit of labor, but you're yeah. not going to get any national supporters on there. And if and if you do, they get crucified. Yeah, yeah. I find that some it's easy, people. It's easy to find your little yeah. chamber and um rabbit get, holes, eh? Like these YouTube rabbit holes. Like you probably are the same as me. Like you have mates that get really into conspiracy theories, bro. I stay away from that shit, eh? Bro, I know, but, I know a few people into it, but nah, I, I try and stay away from conspiracy theories, bro. Conspiracy theories are just like porn. Like they'll have a real like attractive thumbnail. You'll enjoy it while you're watching it. Then you'll get to the end. You'll be like, "What the fuck did I just watch?" Like, you know. But I can, but I can see how people get, you know, infatuated with it, and they're like, "Oh my god!" Because the problem is, if, if if one conspiracy theory holds a lot of truth, then you can be like, "Oh my god!" That means the others yeah. must must have some truth. And I'm like, "Ah, uh, no, it doesn't work that way." Yeah, yeah. Nah, this it's not a good rabbit hole to go down because. You're just gonna get paranoid about a bunch of shit that you can't really have any control over anyway, you know? Yeah. And then I, I feel like some people use them as a way to like cop out of shit and not do anything with their life too. They're like, oh well, the world's gonna win at this date or oh the the elites will take over at this time and it's just like, oh, what are they up to, bro? I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think we segued way off there. Uh so what's the what's the um We did, we did. Yeah. So what's in the future? Um, in the future, bro, I want more albums. I want more shows. I want bigger shows. Have you done any radio promotion on um, My FM or Flavor? Or... Nah, I really want to get onto My FM, eh? Like, if I can drop some bars on My FM. Who's who's that hype man on My FM? You know the dude that like hypes up whenever a rapper goes on. Jordan. Is it Jordan? I want Jordan to hype man the fuck out of me. I'm like, before I go on there, I'm be like, Yo, Jordan, hype me up, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be like, here's some Adderall. And do what you got to do, bro. Let me spit this shit. Nah. Um, yeah, I really want to get like, you know, my FM, have a radio song. I want I want the shows to be bigger. I want obviously more streams. I really want to get on curated Spotify playlists. I don't know. It seems like there might be a bit of politics behind that. And like, um, I don't know. I really well, want... I mean, this is my personal opinion. And people might not like this, but I think um, 
and look, this is just the nature of the beast, and I'm not blaming anyone, but it is it is what it is. I find it if you're if you're a person not of color, it's more difficult because a lot of the people who control it are, you know, of color. So they they I, prefer oh, to okay. they prefer to help their own first, which which I understand. That's why, like, if you think about all the big hip hop artists over the years, from like Scribe to David Dallas to Young Sid to PNC, none of these dudes are white dudes. That is a good point, bro. Because what's David Dallas? He's like Samoa, no? Yeah, he's Samoa. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, people think that he's white, <laughs> and he probably well, he is white, <laughs> but like. Yeah. yeah, he's, he's someone, and like I'm not hated, man. I mean, he it's just it's weird, just like... it is what it is. It, it is what it is. It's like when people say, "Oh, white privilege and stuff." I'm like, yes, but also no, because everyone has a privilege based on certain um, aspects. Yeah, so you're saying in certain creative outlets, the tides kind of change a bit. Yeah, as in you know, like For whatever sure. group you're with. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Point, bro. Yeah. yeah. That's not to say that, like, there are probably some aspects of life where if you are a white person, you probably are privileged. But Definitely. then there's aspects yeah. where if you're an islander, you know, or a Maori, yeah, you're probably privileged, um, privileged in that aspect. But it's, it is it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. It's just the nature of the beast. I mean, if you think about Eminem, for example, he was definitely not privileged in terms of his, 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 his background. Well, like his come up, right? Yeah. Like, oh, he had to hustle, yeah. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah, anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's probably privileged now because of where he's at. Mm. But so you know, it, it it's kind of a seesaw, yin and yang. Yeah, it's uh, now you've got some good points, bro. It's a bit of a delicate. But that's but that's not to say like I'm not hating. Like, hey, if my FM give you a shot, all good. Flavor give you a shot, all good. New FM. Oh, that's a good. Have point. Have you done, have you performed at the hip hop summit? No, where's that? Uh, it's Same it's held in it's held in South Auckland. I can't remember where. Where is it? Is it Only Hunger? I think so. I performed there. Oh, dope! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's good. Yeah. It, it's good. Yeah, you've got to show me like link me some of the old music when we get off mic and like, yeah, email yeah, it to me. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Well, how about we wrap up now anyway? Because we've been talking for ages. How long have we gone for, bro? Uh, quite a while. Because we started talking like before we even went on air as well. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so man. so where can everyone uh, follow you on oh, social yeah, media? So you can check me out on Instagram at zap underscore nz, Facebook page zap, Spotify, Apple Music zap, YouTube zap, and yeah, sure, follow the journey. Let's have some fun. Let's get rowdy. Let's get wild. Yeah, and yeah, enjoy. Thank you so much, bro. Like I was, you know, still a little bit overwhelmed, eh, bro. Like I've been watching this for a while, and it was dope to see your little lair and where you record and all that. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it, bro, and um, I appreciate you coming yeah. in. And you're good at what you do too. Like you're a natural podcaster, bro. Yeah, well, there's always like I'm. That's a gift, bro. Like, but like I'm probably the same, and with you as well. Like I'm super. Like I'm my own worst critic. So yeah. like I listen back to every podcast and I'll be like, oh, I fobbed out there, or oh, I was like mumbling there, or oh, I should have said this, or something like that, or. Fucked up some word or whatever. So like I'm really anal about it, and even in yeah. terms of audio. Like, oh no, the audio is not quite right. But like, you can get almost to a state of becoming a perfectionist about it. Yeah, yeah. And then like, I'd never release anything because yeah, I'm like, never oh, be I'm happy, gonna eh? get it down to like, yeah, one decibel in terms of. What I really noticed is how you kept the same energy off camera and on camera. It was good. It was good, bro. Like you're really being yourself. It's crazy. I like it. Like some dudes. Do you find especially with radio people, like, it's almost fake. Like they put on this fake, like. Accent and persona as soon as they jump on the mic, then once they jump off, they're like, mm -hmm. it scares me. Yeah, bro. yeah. And you know who are the same politicians? When oh, every, I bet they every, do, bro. every time I talk to a politician, well, not every time, I shouldn't say every time. Some are, some are all good, but then some, as soon as the camera, the mic goes on, they switch, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it can throw me off sometimes. There's some people I've had on, and I'm like, whoa, hold on. And it takes me a while to find my groove because. Mm. It's so it it's so jarring for me. Yeah. Do you approach a politician different to say like a hip hop artist or someone else? Or oh, you, of course. Like I don't you, because the main or you're thing. Like, Yo, what do you smoke? <laughs> <laughs> well, the main thing for me, right? And um, for any podcaster, I would suggest this is the the main thing is to try and make the guest feel comfortable. Yeah. If they don't feel comfortable, then you're not going to get the best out of them, right? Yeah. So if I was like, 
Just <laughs> like, debating the like, well, Yeah, or like swearing or like using bro or like kind of slang terminology while I'm talking to a politician. They might be like, uh, you know, like so you kind of like when they come in or when I'm talking to them, even on Zoom before the podcast starts, I've already worked out their energy and their level in terms yeah. of me matching it. Right? Yeah, how far can like you you're, go? You're, like, you're hyped as hell. So I'm like, sweet, I can be hyped as hell. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. But like if I if I was like really hyped as hell and someone was like kind of introverted, it, it, they might be like, uh, you know. Yeah, bro. Like you kind of want to get them on your level. Eh? You want to hype them up a bit yourself. Yeah, yeah. And also I think something that I've learned from when I first started to now is there'd be often times where I would totally be dominating the conversation <laughs> without even meaning to just because like they were – I was quite not there in terms of matching them. Yeah. Or I just take over the conversation and then I'll be like, in hindsight, I'm like, man, that podcast was more mine than his. You know, so um nah, it's good, bro. You're the host, you're the daddy of this. I, I was also curious, like, are there any NZ podcasts you look up to, or is it more international? Like, who do you look up to for podcasting? Like, did someone inspire you to do this? Or you're just like uh, it's a bit of both. Um I'm a fan of Joe Rogan, obviously. Um that dude's nuts. Eh? Jay Jay Shitty is another one. Um, there's another lady, Marissa Peer, um, Bill Burr, and then in terms of New Zealand ones, um, there's the Everyday Everyday Investor. That's good for like finance stuff. Yeah, um, that's a really good one. What else is there? Uh, Kimberly Crossman has a good one called Pretty Depressed, which is good for anyone who's going through mental health issues. Right. Yeah. There's there's quite a few. Like I've just had a mind blank off the top of my head, but yeah, yeah. there's there's some good stuff. Um, have you always been this good at communicating? Like, I could already tell first time I met you, like, you're very good at communicating. You're very articulate. Like, did that, have you always been like that? Or did that come with the more episodes you've done and everything? You'd have to go back and listen to my first episode to but tell I'm like, me, I'm like, this guy's on. Like, very same energy I, I, on and off camera. Well, like, I mean, the more you do it, the more you get better at it. I like, mean, I, I definitely th feel like I'm better than what I was when I first started. But when I first started, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm just trying to wing this. Like, and you're way more charismatic. And energetic than I actually thought you'd be, like. But I was, that's I, because. But but here's the thing. Like this is because. Um, you're sometimes I have to hold back. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. I have to hold back because it's not actually about me. Exactly. Like you're asking me questions, so yeah. I have to answer them. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But like, you're, you're talking like especially when it's like the politician vibe, eh, and you don't want to kind of hype them up or you don't want to freak them out. Start talking well, about like it's, myth it's, and it's, shit. It's not about that. So like Kimberly Crossman, who I had on recently, like she pretty much talked. I barely talked that entire <laughs> podcast. And then at the end, she was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like you didn't even, I didn't even ask you anything. I'm like, yeah. it's, it's all good. It's not even about me. Yeah. But then. um, That's good. Selfless. You're a selfless man. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, we, my man. That will wrap Went up. Went off there, on a but, tangent. Yep. Yeah, but before we go, uh, Zap is going to drop a verse. Oh, freaking it's, A. It's dope as hell. And I just want to say, like, I don't listen to as much hip hop as I used to, but you're one of the, the best dudes that I've heard. Oh, thank in you, bro. A while. That a, means a lot. A honestly, good my while. Bro. So keep doing your thing, man. And make sure you check out Zap stuff on uh, Spotify and all that jazz. But yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, bro. I've been a fan of this. It's it's a cool full circle moment. Yep. Um, oh, bro. I'm, I'm very humbled and grateful. Thank you. Cool. Kiwi Talks. Kiwi Talks. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Only time that I brag when I'm on the mic She go down, lost your no overbite Heard it was your gig, but I took the hype I work for this, don't gotta roll the dice Quite frankly, my instincts do not trust None of you other guys Yeah, what you gonna do about that? People over there, yeah, they knew about Zap Do a show on Willie, then I'm hitting up Pap And you already know that I got the whack Cause I'm a white ass fucky ha Come on the baby, she wanna love me hard Up all night, no muddy draw Lonely stone, I kid cutty, yeah, eh What's it gonna be now? I thought I only freestyle Everybody in the city wanna look at me now straight swish only ain't no rebound Lost 10 kgs, got another 10k Put it in the piggy bank, wait for a rainy day Don't care what they do, don't care what they say Like a little pony giddy up on a lay Got me like, now whoa, please leave me alone So many people trying to hit my phone Ass like Pumba, skinny like the moan It be like the Lion King, we'll get it on They say pull a game bear back I'm like a mad cat, rabbit stalk shit, but I don't stare back, see you on my level uh, You ain't near that, even though your boy say You scared man, hold up, that's my weed In other words, she down on me In other words, I Turn these verbs into facts, that's how it really be Why do I work so hard? It's because I need a manifest in Millie G Go look at me, waking up early from a late night That's okay, I'm a fame Don't do cocaine, I drink Milo Drop another hit and then I'm gonna go viral Pop
off and I'm the J like that boy Spyro Ain't nobody ever better than me, yes I know I'm the man at this, don't do drugs but I do cannabis Pay white skin guts still like Anakin Keyboard warriors, they just mannequins One more time, I know they vanishing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's my man Zip Make sure you follow the brother And check out his music yeah, And make sure you so share, like and subscribe And that's the end of the show Stay safe, peace, peace.